Jonathan Taylor is agent causing him to make the biggest mistake of his career. Pat McAfee show with my guy, Michael Lombardi uh, from VEASAN. Big fan, of course. So look, running backs this offseason have absolutely lost their minds. They're upset. They're mad that there is not a market. They're mad that the position is not valued how it used to be and how they think it should be. We saw the infamous Zoom call about a month ago with uh, Josh Jacobs and Saquon Barkley and uh, Jonathan Taylor. And you know now we're hearing that running back should be paid more. Look, here's the deal. It's as simple as this. There isn't a market for these guys. There isn't a market for a running back like this, for, like Jonathan Taylor. And it sounds crazy, but it's the truth. Jonathan Taylor is holding up the Indianapolis Colts and he's saying he wants $16 million a year. Let's put that in perspective, ladies and gentlemen. Saquon Barkley just took $11 million. Really, he took $10 million because he won't hit his incentives. Derrick Henry makes about $12 million. Why the hell would the Colts overpay for Jonathan Taylor coming off of a bad year why would they overpay for him? I don't understand it. I don't understand what these running backs think that they're doing. And here's, here's, the, here's the truth. If he sits out, okay, if he sits out and then let's say they go into some kind of next year and they go into some kind of free agency bidding war, I will bet anything. I guarantee you, guarantee you, he does not get over $12 million a year. And he certainly wouldn't get $16 million a year. Christian McCaffrey's contract is something that people are going to talk about as like the benchmark. But you also have to remember that Christian McCaffrey's contract took into effect how much he would be receiving, how much he would be catching the football, how much he would be playing as a wide receiver. His contract's a little different. If you look at someone like Derrick Henry, do you think in the comments that Jonathan Taylor should be paid $4 million more a year? Do you think if you were the Indianapolis Colts, would you pay Jonathan Taylor $16 million when guys like Derrick Henry are out there making $12 million? Speaking of making people happy, the boss here isn't in Indianapolis uh, because of how he's handling publicly <laughs> the Jonathan Taylor situation. Wow, Jonathan yeah. Taylor's agent who... Also, they're going to get into Ursay's comments. Ursay is kind of getting into trouble for saying basically, or I guess literally, because he, he said this. Ursay said that if he died, no one would care. And if Jonathan Taylor was out of the NFL, no one would care. The show would go on. There would be a new running back in place, and the wheels would keep turning. And people, obviously, that's some colorful language, and people aren't happy about that. But it's the guy's honest truth. They don't care at all. If Derrick Henry retired, the NFL is going to go on. The Tennessee Titans will find a running back. That running back will be productive. Will he be Derrick Henry? Probably not. Will it really matter that much in the grand scheme of things for a couple of years? Probably not. And then they'll find somebody else. They had Eddie George. They had Chris Johnson. Now they, now they have Derrick Henry. Has, it, has any of that really mattered in the grand scheme of things? No. It, it really doesn't. It's just the way that the position is. Bottom line. We had a video, man, talk about see the future. I, was, I had a video a couple months ago about the decline of the running back, the decline of, of the position. And you know it's a 30, 40 minute video, but I really kind of outlined exactly what's going on here. The NFL running back should watch that video because then I think they would understand what's happening to their position and why it's dwindling. I, uh, I don't necessarily understand the strategy behind mm -hmm. his operations as well, but I assume he has some goal or strategy in mind to make this thing all happen. And allegedly there's interest growing around the league to trade for Jonathan Taylor, although Jim Irsay has publicly said, we ain't trade him now or October, brother. Mm -hmm. That ain't happening. So with Jonathan Taylor, his agent, Jim Irsay, feeling as if he is the voice of the NFL now, which is why I assume he put out that tweet about running backs and new CBAs and negotiations and everybody said oh this is him taking a shot at jonathan taylor when i so the cba i was waiting for someone to bring this up so i could talk about this so ursay mentions that there was a negotiation like there was a negotiation there's a, there's a way we do things there's a way that these contracts and all that stuff gets negotiated just because the running backs want more money right now that's against the goodwill of the negotiation that's already happened so Ursay is basically saying, like, look, 
we did this. We did what y'all are talking about. We already had these negotiations. We all agreed, shook hands, you know, salute, and and now we're moving on. And now y'all want to go back on all of that. Y'all want to go back on the negotiations, which is a pretty bad look. You know, I mean, they basically, or they did, negotiate for a set thing, and now that they think that that's not fair, which it is fair, they want to completely undo everything that they agreed upon and and hold out and, and hold these teams hostages. And I don't blame the owners for saying, mm, no, we're not going to do that. Why would we do that? Like, wh- in what universe would we do that? So, as much as I hate to, I'm kind of siding with Jim Ursay on this whole thing. I assume Jim Ursay was just talking as a whole, but certainly involving Jonathan Taylor in that conversation. How do you feel this works out? And what are your thoughts on the point uh, that we're at right now with this whole thing? Because he is the only person, I was at training camp, He's the only person that has not bought in. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. New coach, yeah. what? new quarterback, what? new building, what? new everything pretty much. New vibes. Everybody's kind of all in. Anthony Richardson, it's hard not to. You watch him, you're like, yeah. all right, we got okay. a fucking guy here who can do it. Yeah. He's the only one that is hoodie up, standoffish, not talking to anybody. It's not good. It's toxic. Yeah. And if he's saying, I'm not trading him, how do they get through this situation? How do you build a team with it happening? I don't, I don't... I'll tell you how they're going to get through it. They will non-football injury him, so they'll put him on the not performance list or whatever it's called, and he won't play, and they won't have to pay him because if he's on the non-football injury list, that that's a list you get put on when you get hurt outside of the game, so the team then doesn't have to pay your contract. Your contract gets moved to next year, so nothing financially will happen to the Colts. Taylor will miss a year of his career, and then he will have to go into, I guess he would get tagged, and then we basically see what happened with Lamar Jackson this offseason, where other teams could make offers, other there could be a trade, whatever. But that, that's, that's like the here and now. That's what would happen if Taylor doesn't agree to play in the next month, month, month and a week. I don't, I don't well, know. I, well, I think there's two. First of all, April 19th, he issued a statement saying he put a pen to paper. He's all in. He's a Colt. He understood what he did when he signed that contract. And then he changed agents. And now this agent has convinced him that this scorched earth mentality, this putting a a, a kind of a, a face that looks like he's so unhappy that he's been treated so poorly uh, that it's going to get him somewhere. You've got to understand in every negotiation who you're dealing with, right? You need a scouting report on everybody, right? It's like when Jesse Bates last year said, you know, he's going to hold, he's going to, you know, do whatever he could do. You're dealing with Mike Brown, just so you understand that, Jesse. Like, Mike Brown don't budge, okay? Well, now you're dealing with Jim Irsay, who's the the crazy uncle at everybody's Thanksgiving table who kind of <laughs> says whatever the hell he says, right? You know, it's like, oh, that's Uncle Joe. You know, that's Uncle Jim. You know, whatever he does, right? You're dealing with this guy. And if you're negotiating against Irsay, you know that whatever he says, he's not going to change his mind. He's Well, the problem, too, with negotiating with Jim Irsay in this specific situation is that Jonathan Taylor has absolutely no leverage. Jonathan Taylor signed the contract, like Michael just said, in in April. He said he's a Colt. He's he's excited. He pinned a paper, whatever. I can't whatever all about it. He's on he's under contract. So what leverage does he have? He's going to hold out. He's not going to play. He's going to forfeit a year of his career and he's going to allow the Colts not to pay him. Okay, like I don't. Or why would Ursay budge off of that? Why would Ursay freak out, budge off of that, and overpay him? He's not going to. He doesn't have to, especially right now when the Colts are rebuilding. You know, the the Colts are not in the not in a spot where they have to make a move like that. It's 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 just one of those things where it's schoolyard basic economics. And Taylor is going to find out the same thing Saquon Barkley found out. Saquon Barkley made a huge stink for. What, like $100,000? Again, he, he, he signed some incentives, but the incentives are like 1,300 yards rushing, playoff wins. He's not going to do any. They're not going to do that. You know, so uh, it, it's a lot of noise, but there's no substance really to any of this running back drama, I don't think. Where he said it for a reason. So if you can't go directly, this tactic isn't going to work. Now, for me, if I were Chris Ballard, here's what I would do. I would tell Jonathan Taylor, your treatment's from 6 to 8. You come in the building at 6, you get treatment from 6 to 8, you go back home. 
We don't want you around the team. We just want you to get better. I don't want your attitude surfacing anywhere because it's what we call the law of threes in leadership. There's three groups of people on every team. There's people in group one that'll do anything you want them to do. There's people in group two who are undecided. And then there's people in group three that you can't make happy. Taylor happens to be in group three. He's the only player on the Colts in group three. So what Steichen needs to do is focus strictly on people in group one and then just outcast the other guy and ignore him. Because he's he's got yeah. his career. He's listening to an idiot. He's listening to his agent, right? <laughs> and that's not a smart thing to do. There's smart agents and there's dumb agents, yeah. just like any profession. Wow. This tactic isn't smart because, let's face it, you're dealing with Uncle Jim. Uncle Jim Ursay ain't going to budge. Yeah, so, like, I don't know the... It's not smart either because of the market. Like, it's not smart. This tactic is, is even dumber because it seems like the agent doesn't understand the market that his client is in. Agent well enough, it seems like he's kind of new to like make a, I mean, there's some stuff coming up. With, like, obviously we're learning a lot about this yeah. guy quickly mm -hmm. here, but he certainly has one Jonathan Taylor ever. Cause to your point, April 19th, I'm all good. Still friends with everybody in the building. Still mm -hmm. friends, friendly yeah. with everybody in the building. And then all of a sudden training camp, not talking to anybody. Like, mm. right. That's a wild thing to happen. So this guy got to be a great talker. So that's one part of doing business. I, well, I think anytime you're telling a player like, hey, sh you should be making whatever, five, six million dollars more a year. That'll get that'll get you an audience with someone, you know, I think just pissing off one thirty second of who you're going to have to do business with. If you're going to be a football agent is certainly an interesting tactic. And maybe it'll work out in the end in this whole thing. But like. I Shane Steichen's got to be just fuck, like, how am I supposed to fucking? Yeah. What are we? This, I, I, what am I? I would tell to? Shane, just ignore it. Don't even worry about it. Look, here's the other. Yeah, I would tell Shane, we're moving on without Jonathan Taylor. I mean, it's that easy. The, the team is so new, new head coach, new quarterback, new identity, new culture, all of that stuff. Complete rebuild. You don't really need Jonathan Taylor. Obviously, Jonathan Taylor is good, but given their situation, you don't really need him. It, it, it's a full rebuild. Just do it with the guys you got and find your new Jonathan Taylor next year or the year after that or, or whatever. I mean, like, Steichen has to focus on his job. He can't focus on how am I going to get Jonathan Taylor 1,200 yards rushing. Like, why would that matter to him? Another thing, I think this agent who's so experienced, he knows everything, right? Nobody wants to take on somebody else's problems. Like, I'm yeah. shocked that this rumor comes out today. There's a lot of interest in trading. That's the other, uh, that's the trade part. Okay. So if you trade for Jonathan Taylor, let's say the Saints or Alvin Kamara is getting suspended. Let's say the Saints traded for Jonathan Taylor. You would have to give up an asset. Let's just pretend it's a second round pick. I, I don't know what it is. You would have to give up an asset, get the player. Then you would have to deal with signing him to this $16 million deal that he wants, which is way overvalued, or he's not going to sign. He's going to hold out. If you trade for him and then tell him, hey, we're going to pay you $11 million a year, the proof is in the pudding, ladies and gentlemen. He certainly is not going to agree with that. And then what's he going to do? Hold out for your team? So what team is going to trade for a running back off of a bad year, then agree to overpay him? past seem seemingly the peak of his career for jonathan taylor okay the, maybe that might be true i doubt it because who wants to a give up a draft pick then give up a ton of money and then deal with a guy who looks like who's who's behaving poorly like nobody wants somebody else's problem nobody just volunteers and says ah, i'll take all your problems over here you know uh, they got am enough I the of greatest own. ladies and gentlemen so am like, i the greatest player. you got to put things in perspective hey, he's, he's a, a great player he's a good but player the, now last year he was not Jim, i will say yeah, last year good, yeah. but what jim said is true it's look year, this league has been around a long time there's a lot of great players and life goes on just like you know yeah. if 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 somebody have he got injured you got to move on i get it he's a great player but he's not the last of the great players and so you got to figure out a way to deal with it if he's not happy you can't you can't affect your team. You have gotta make sure that your team is building itself together because together is the only way we're gonna win. If I die tonight, Joe said, <laughs> yes. this league will be just fine. Well said, you know, everybody's awesome. talking about Jim's not speaking coherently during the whole thing. It's like yeah. Jim's just saying, like, yep, 
I am one of the owners. He's Uncle Jim. I'm the He's longest Uncle owner yeah. in yeah. this in this league. Everybody that is an owner right now, I voted on. You're welcome. Yeah. yeah. I've let you into my league pretty much. What he's saying. <laughs> yeah. And when I die, this league don't matter. Yeah. They, they are going to move full speed ahead. I think yeah, that was actually. Have, a pre- they will have a new owner, and it, that will be it. Be like perceptive view from Jim Irsay's mindset, but I still don't think he should have been the one talking about Mm -hmm. the running back negotiation situation publicly. Like, let some other owner do that, Jim. Have a little bit of situational awareness. Irsay thinks he is the mouthpiece of the NFL. Irsay loves to wax poetic on this kind of stuff, so he he was never going to not talk about it. With what you got brewing in your own building, but I don't think that would have mattered if he puts that tweet out or not. I think Jonathan Taylor's strategy would have been the same way, seemingly, and I don't know if... I don't know if you could call what he's doing a strategy. I, I, I think to me it's... It's stupid. not. He's trying to strong-arm... He's trying to strong arm Jim Jim Irsay with zero leverage. He's trying to rob a bank with the old like stapler under the shirt, pretend like it's a weapon. You're just not going to win this. Like you got to know your opponent, right? So Muhammad Ali watched tape on George Foreman before he got to fight him over in Zaire, and he basically came to the conclusion: Look, this guy's fought forty times. He's knocked out thirty-seven people, right? I, he's bigger, stronger, tougher, meaner than I am. Right. I can't I have to do something completely different. So he wrote the dope and he said, if I can get him past the eighth round, I'm going to win the fight. He did that. That's strategy. This isn't a strategy. We're just going to act so unhappy. That's not a strategy. Like well, that's uh, one of the greatest strategies. Well, especially after in April, not that long ago, you're acting the complete opposite. She's of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Still talked about. People don't talk about boxing strategy on a regular basis. The rub dub still talked about. Simpson, Homer made an entire fucking <laughs> episode about yeah. the whole thing. You're right. There is strategy and then there isn't strategy. In this particular one, I think like acknowledging that Jim Mercy pays his people. You know, like that's something Jim does. Very rarely. Yep. Now I th- He paid Jonathan Taylor. Like Jonathan Taylor just agreed to a contract, very happy with. He made a public statement about like Ursay already did this. That's why it's so weird. That's why it's such a weird timing thing. Because in Ursay's mind, this is all this is already taken care of. And if you go with Jonathan Taylor's own quotes, it was taken care of four months ago. I think Florio cited a Nedrin James situation where he went to Arizona. Yeah. And Edrin and Jim Ursay, very tight. Still, still to this day, they're yes. very tight. So that might have been a time, I guess, when another team was like, all right, we'll take a one and pay, and you won't. But every other situation of recent history, like Jim is going to take care of, you know, I would oh, – he had four touchdowns last year. Yep. Zero receiving touchdowns. 11 games, missed six of them, 800, and this is the time to do the – after coming out and saying, like, I'll play, and then to – and we had a number four overall pick. Just optically, to your – strategize-wise, you're losing the public too, like – Oh, yeah, you're losing the locker room, you're losing the public. I mean, like Pat said, even on field, this is the worst possible time to be doing this. You just came off of a terrible year where you were injured and when you were playing, it was subpar. It was just whatever. Imagine, like, really think about what he's doing. He's coming out after a terrible year where everything that went wrong could have went wrong. And he's saying, you know what? I know we just did this contract thing. I know you just took a new franchise quarterback. I know we have a new head coach. Now that I think about it, I want to be the highest paid running back in the NFL. So, okay, well, that's great, Jonathan. We got some bigger fish to fry. We got bigger issues right now, and you just signed a contract, and you just had a terrible year. Why would we do that? Like, what? And what why, would, why would I do that? And Jonathan Taylor sitting there like, well, then I won't play. Okay. No problem. Like it, it feels like a little kid. It feels like a little kid's reasoning. Colts fans love yeah, Jonathan yeah. Taylor, and then immediately, mm-hmm. like they're seeing it, like we had never. We were terrible. We were the. We were no fun to watch as a football team last year. But, you were yeah. bad at football last year. Very Our team was bad at football. Now Awful. circumstances with quarterbacks and everything, we understand. But to act now like you like that is, I don't know. Publicly, it doesn't seem to be going great. Professionally, we will see. But. Let's look at some stats. All right, so if you look at these, so this is Jonathan Taylor's stats, right? So Jonathan Taylor, last year of his rookie deal is coming up, his fourth year. This is what Jonathan Taylor's done so far. Obviously, the 1,800-yard 
is the big one. That's the big standout. Is that who he truly is, or is it kind of an average of all this? I, yeah, who knows, right? But this is what he's done. So Jonathan Taylor wants big running back money. If you look at someone like Aaron Jones, and you take three years-ish of Aaron Jones, the production is pretty similar. No one would say Aaron Jones is the best running back in the NFL. Would you say Aaron Jones is even like a top, I don't, I don't know, is he a top five running back in the NFL? Is he a top 10? Where is he at in the NFL? I don't know. But Jonathan Taylor's numbers are obviously better. Again, he's got an 1,800-yard season. But the touchdowns are pretty similar. If you go from Aaron Jones's this this peak here, this like, uh, 16 touchdown year, the 1100 and kind of combine all that. What's he looking at? He's looking at 16 touchdowns, nine, 25, 29 touchdowns in that three year stretch there. And one of those years, he has 171 carries. So I'm not, it's not like I'm cherry picking here. So he had 29 touchdowns and Taylor's got 33. Taylor averages, uh, 5.1 yards and yards in attempt. Aaron Jones averages 5.1 yards in attempt. Aaron Jones has, uh, 17 receiving touchdowns, or if you want to do the last three years, he has eight, uh, 13. Jonathan Taylor has three in his entire career. John, I mean, like you see what I'm saying? Where it's really not. You you could you could kind of cherry pick these stats to make it where they're pretty even. I I will obviously the three years of Jonathan Taylor is better than the three any any three years of Aaron Jones, but it's not that much better and if you're an owner this is what you have to look at and honestly i'm kind of going back on that because aaron jones had 200 200 carries 171 carries 213 carries and jonathan taylor had 332 carries so i mean if you really did a deep dive you could maybe argue that they're they're the exact same pretty much so this is what an owner is looking at when you when you look at a jonathan taylor and it's like, man, how can I replace him? Uh, virtually with anyone. Virtually with any decent running back in the NFL, they're all kind of doing the same thing. Like They're all kind of right there. They're all just kind of chilling. You know? And this is just one random person I picked was Aaron Jones. Now, again, before you start screaming in the... Uh, when you, before you start screaming in the comments, I'm not saying Aaron Jones is better than jonathan taylor i'm just saying jonathan taylor agreed to a rookie deal he signed a deal he announced that he was happy with the deal he signed a couple months ago and he thinks he's someone he's not he thinks the market is something that it's not that's all i'm saying let me know in the comments below what you think ladies and gentlemen fun topic today thank you for watching i will see you in the next video